Hello everyone, my name is Peng Peng Zhang. I'm from Michigan State University. Thank you for the invitation. And this work I'm going to present today was carried out by my graduate student Xi Dong and in collaboration with the theorist Dr. Wei Lai. We know that in the TMD research, uh, the phase engineering and integration of functionalities into uh, the heterostructures are of paramount interest. And electronic structures of TMDs are largely determined by the d-electron count of transition metal and its coordination environment. So the different polymorphic phases are expected to have the different electronic structures. And this research is motivated by one question, that is whether we can integrate phase engineering and rational heterostructure in a single step. So next, we are going to discuss the materials of choices. So we are interested in the group 6 TMDs. The schematics on the left shows the different polymorphic phases of the group 6 TMD. In the H phase, the stacking is ABA. This is a semiconducting phase. In the T phase, the stacking is ABC. This is a metallic phase. But we know that the T structure is typically not stable in the freestanding form. It can undergo a spontaneous lattice distortion into the T prime structure. So the distorted metal ions in the T-prime structure, it form the one-dimensional zigzag chain. And on the electronic structure, we can see that at gamma point, it opens an uh, inverted band gap. So the conduction band and valence band are inverted in the T-prime phase. And it has been demonstrated that the T-prime uh, TMD, it can be a topological insulator. That means the bulk is insulating, but it has the conducting edge state, topologically protected from the backscattering by the time reversal symmetry. The other class of material we are interested in is SNIC2. So this is a main group transition metal. It has been shown that SNIC2 grown on graphene uh, has the interfacial superconductor emerges at about 5K. So this is enabled by the interfacial charge transfer. And we know that the combination of TI and superconductor, it provides a great template to study the proximate effect. So next, let's take a look at the phase transformation mechanism in the group 6 TMDs. So this is a total energy calculation. It shows that other than Townsend and Tellerite, which is more stable in the T prime phase, all the other group 6 TMDs has the H phase as the thermodynamically stable phase. So that means if we want to induce the transition to the T or T prime, the energy difference between this phase and the H phase has to be a workout. There are mainly two mechanisms to induce this phase transition. The first mechanism is the charge transfer. So we are again showing the orbital arrangement and polymorphic phases of H and T. So we can see that by ejecting an excess electron, which is labeled by this red arrow, into the H phase, this excess electron goes to the degenerate dxy and dx squared minus y squared orbital. It constructs the conduction band minimum. But when this excess electron is ejected into the T phase, it goes to the degenerate T2g orbital, whose energy level is much lower than that of the conduction band minimum in the H phase. So that means by gaining excess electron in the H phase, it lifts the energy level, the total energy of the entire system, above that of the T. So this actually is the energetic argument why we can induce the phase transformation from H to T or T prime by gaining excess electrons. The other route is to, uh, to apply a stress or strain to the system. But you can see from this graph that the, the tensor of strain that is required to induce this transformation, it can be quite significant. And experimentally, intercalation electrostatic doping, high energy particles like plasma, electron, laser, or hydrostatic pressure have all been explored to induce this phase transformation. The potential problem is the introduction of excess, extra source of contamination or structure damage to the, to the system. So today I would like to introduce a unique methodology to control the polymorphic phases of group 6 TMD with the formation of cow-shell hydrostructure. So we do the deposition using molecular beam, beam epitaxy technique. So our MBE system is in situ connected to the STM characterization in, uh, in the UHV systems. So as we can see from the uh, panel A, when we deposit Tungsten cyanide onto the HOPG substrate, it formed the thermodynamically stable H phase, as evidenced by this uh, six fold symmetry in the STM image. Uh, the larger periodicity you can see from this image is the Morillo pattern to the substrate. 
When we deposit SNSE2 tinasalinide, it preferentially nucleates on the existing edge of the Townsend salinide island. But when you increase the coverage of SNSE2, it starts to surround the WSE2 island until it forms an enclosed cultural structure, as shown in the panel D. And when you zoom in the WSE2 core, you can notice the, uh, the one-dimensional strap uh, structures. This is characteristic for the T-prime phase. And the bottom schematics shows you how this process depends on the coverage of the SNSE2. So when the SNSE2 nucleated on the adjacent Townsend Dasalinate edges are not yet merged, there is no phase transformation induced in the core. However, when you form this enclosed cultural structure as shown in panel G, we can convert the entire core into the T prime phase. If it's in the middle, that means when the shell is not uh, completely covering the, uh, the core, you can have partial phase transformation coexisting with the non-transitioned uh, H phase. So this result tells us this phase transformation process enabled by the core shell formation uh, is closely related to the coverage of the shell. And this process is likely independent of the substrate. Of course, when we induce the phase transformation, uh, the electronic structure is also modulated. The H phase WSE2 is a semiconductor. We can see this large band gap in STS curve. In the T prime WSE2, for the curve taken on the interior of the domain, as shown in the blue curve, we can see a dip in the density of states feature. And right above this dip, we notice this conducting edge state taken uh, at the boundary between T prime WSE2 and the trivial semiconductor. And in our case, this trivial semiconductor can be either H phase WSE2 or the SN IC2. So topological property of T prime WSE2 has already been reported. And in STS studies, this deep feature right, observed on the interior of the domain was attributed to the broadening of the electron lifetime. We want to know the spatial extension of the topological edge state. Particularly, we want to know how and whether it is perturbed by the local inhomogeneity at the hydrostructure boundary. STM image shows you a partially converted domain. So there are two types of boundaries. The boundary between H and T prime WSE2 is quite smooth. That's because the lattice constants of these two structures along the direction parallel to the boundary are identical to each other. We also have a rough boundary between SNSE2 and T prime WSE2 due to the formation of the misfit dislocation at the boundary, which we will discuss in the next few slides. To examine the spatial extension of the topological edge state, we perform STS learn profile along the dotted white dots and the green dots. In the vertically stacked STS and the associated heat map in the E and F, we can see that this topological edge state from each boundary, they extends almost the same distance into the interior of the WSE2. And this distance is about two nanometer. So this experiment provides strong evidence that this extended topological edge state uh, is quite robust, regardless of the, the boundary in homogeneity. So what's the origin of the phase transformation? So we have shown so far that by forming the enclosed the cow shell structure between WSE2 and SNSE2, we can induce the phase transformation in the core from the H phase to the T prime phase. But what's the origin of this phase transformation? As we discussed before, there are mainly two mechanisms to induce the phase transformation in the group 6 TMD. One is charge transfer, the other is stress. And both are likely to occur in the hydrostructures. So let's examine the charge transfer first. So in this experiment, we uh, track the evolution of the electronic structure towards the boundary. And we trace the onset of the conduction band minimum and the valence band maximum. We notice significant upward band bending in both the WSE2 and SNSE2 domains next to the boundary. So that indicates the electrons are being depleted instead of accumulated near the boundary. So we can rule out charge transfer as the origin of the phase transformation. Because in this mechanism, the WSE2H phase WSE2 has to gain excess electrons in order to uh, to transform into the T prime phase. But we know that from our experiment, we know those electrons are being depleted, so we are not gaining excess electron. So how about the, uh, the stress or the strain? So we know that uh, SNSE2 and WSE2, these two materials have very different lattice constant. The misfit strain is about 15%. 
it's very hard to sustain such a big misfit in the hydrostructure or hydroabitaxial growth. It is expected to be relaxed through the formation of misfit dislocations, and indeed, this is what we saw in the experiment. In the STS land profile taken along the boundary, other than the two states at the negative sample bias that persist through the entire boundary uh, that are responsible for depleting electrons in the adjacent domains, we also see the dense of states at the positive sample bias. And the peak intensity uh, is, is periodically modulated along the boundary, correlating to the morphological features. And we believe this is affiliated with the misfit dislocation. We can prove this by the DFT calculations. The DFT computes the optimized boundary structure and the projected tensor of states. And along the boundary, as shown in the uh, figure B, we highlight three features. Uh, the two enclosed by the black and blue boxes, their real sp space charge density distribution is along the entire boundary, associated with the acceptor-like tensor of states. But the one enclosed by the red box uh, the real space charge density is centered at the misfit dislocations. So by combining the experiment and the theory, we can verify the formation of misfit dislocations along the SNIC2 and WIC2 boundary. And this can allow us to rule out hydroepitaxial strain as the cause of the phase transformation, because this hydroepitaxial strain has been largely relaxed by the misfit dislocations formed at the boundary. Then what's the origin of the phase transformation? So let's revisit the experimental observation. So we show you that uh, the phase transformation is strongly dependent on the coverage of SNIC2, the shell. At the initial stage, when the SNIC2 domains nucleated on the adjacent WIC2 edges are not yet merged, there's no phase transformation observed in the WIC2 core. But with the increasing coverage of the shell, when the adjacent SNIC2 domains encounter each other and coalesce, we observe uh, the phase transformation in the core upon the formation of this uh, enclosed cow shell structure. So in the schematics A, uh, we show you the lattice alignment between SNIC2 and WIC2. And by the way, this schematics is not intending to show you the optimized band structure as we calculate from DFT. Instead, we highlight the degree of freedom in this uh, alignment at the covalent boundary junction. So namely, uh, at this junction, six SNIC2 lattice equals to the seven WIC2 lattice. And the degree of freedom at this alignment is highlighted as the red arrow, which is the location of the misfit dislocations. So when we have the type 1 and type 2 configurations uh, emerge from the right and the bottom edges, as shown in the schematics B, uh, it translates into a 17% lattice misalignment in the shell. So that means SNIC2 domains, right, adjacent from the right and bottom edges, when they merge at uh, the, the merging front, the SNIC2 lattices will have to rearrange themselves to reach to the equilibrium positions. And this process will create a shear stress along the covalent bounded SNIC2 WIC2 junction. And this is likely inducing the gliding motion of selenium atoms with respect to the tungsten ions. And when this effect propagates into the interior of the core, the WIC2 core, it can induce the H to T prime phase transition in the core. So to summarize, um, the methodology we discuss here is likely applicable to other TMDs with the proper choice of core and shell, and also to other ripple deposition techniques. The two key components for this mechanism is first, the covalent bounded core shell junction to enable the stress propagation, and second, Van der Waals interacting substrate to give the lattices in the shell the room and the freedom to rearrange during the merging process. And furthermore, this SNIC2 and T prime WIC2 hydrostructure provides a valuable platform for investigating the proximity induced superconductivity on the topological edge of one T prime WIC2. So as we discussed before, when you cool down to low temperature, SNIC2 is superconducting. Uh, this is enabled by the charge transfer with the substrate. And the direct exposed lateral hydrostructure between the superconducting SNIC2 and topological uh, T prime WIC2 and it's suitable for probing the spatial extension of this proximity effect. And thank you for your attention.